Guess who just got access to ChatGPT's plugins? Me. I actually saw the OpenAI president and co-founder announce Code Interpreter and demonstrate ChatGPT plugins live at the TED conference almost a whole week before OpenAI even announced them to the public. Yep. That's me sitting in the audience as Greg Brockman, OpenAI's president and co-founder, introduced ChatGPT plugins. And honestly, I was underwhelmed, but I still wanted to try them out myself. And I've been waiting for this golden ticket for weeks now. Code Interpreter and plugins are the next big thing. And but they just started rolling out access to ChatGPT Plus users this week, which unfortunately doesn't include access to Code Interpreter. But as soon as I get access, I'll drop a video. So make sure you're subscribed if you're interested in AI tech tra and for all the other plugins, I'll show you an inside look. I just got access to plugins. This is going to be a live demo. This is the first time I'm using them. We're doing this together. I'm really excited, guys. And by the time I post this video, I'm sure this will have rolled out to all ChatGPT Plus users because it's supposed to roll out by the end of this week. And maybe it'll already be available to the public. I'm sure you're going to be able to play around with this really soon. They actually changed the UI a bit here. Now we have this toggle between ChatGPT 3.5 and GPT 4. This used to be a drop down menu, but I kind of like the toggle with the little icon. I, we're going to have to choose GPT 4 in order for us to use plugins. If you go down here to settings and then you go to beta features and turn on plugins right here. That's how you use it. So we're going to choose Chat GPT 4 and and then we can go to plugin. This also gives you access to browsing. So you can turn that on and now ChatGPT has access to the internet, which Bard already has, to be fair. They're a bit late, but that's cool. Now I have no plugins enabled, but I have to enable them in the plugin store. So we can go to the plugin store and look how many we have. Oh my God. I was going to try them all, but I, but I think there's definitely too many. Let's check out some of the plugins we do have. And as a dev, you can make your own plugins. That's a huge opportunity. I'm probably going to make my own plugin for some things, but look at this. This is really cool. Web pilot, browse, and you can generate articles from one or more URLs. We've got comic finder that helps you find relevant comics. Apple ultimate AI research assistant. That sounds good. We're going to try that one. Trip.com. I am planning a trip next week. Let's install that and get help with my trips. Chat with PDF for asking questions, analyzing and parsing through PDFs. Most popular is speak, learn how to say anything in another language. Let's do that too. Zapier, of course, I don't really use it that much anymore. Wolfram, Wolfram gives you access to computation, math, curated knowledge and real-time data through Wolfram Alpha. Man, that saved me in university. We're definitely getting that. Open table, yeah, I wanna book some restaurants this weekend. Expedia, I'm going a little crazy. I'm like, Oprah, you get a plugin, you get a but this is exciting. I don't like that it's not searchable, but I guess they're just releasing it now. So, oh, we can even play chess in here. Playlist AI creates Spotify playlists for any prompt. That's pretty cool. We're going to try that one. That was enough. So let's see. We have a lot of plugins already. I got a little carried away. Oh, there's a limit. You can only have three enabled at a time. Keep that in mind. But let's start with Wolfram Alpha. Let's say Expedia and speak. Let's try those three. Wait, do any of these offer visualizations? Let's see. What are the top programming languages of 2023 in the US? Show me a graph. I don't know if it can do this, but let's just see. Wait, I have a feeling it can do visualizations using Wolfram. The Wolfram can connect to the internet and therefore we're going to get relevant data on the top programming languages because out of the box chat GPT doesn't have any access to the internet and wouldn't know where to get this. So it's taking it step by step. I'm sorry, but I'm unable to retrieve the specific data. I can tell you that as of my last update in September 2021, some of the most popular programming languages in the US were Python, JavaScript, Java, C Sharp, and C++. That sounds about right, but you don't even show me a graph. That's not very exciting. What's the cool thing you can do with the Wolfram plugin. It can compute pretty complex math, I assume. It can do a wide range of cool things. Here are a few examples. Complex calculations like calculus, Linalge, solve equations, integrate, differentiate functions. I don't know why we had to do that by hand if all of this is available online now, but whatever. Properties of chemical elements, astronomical data, or information about biological species. And it can do some NLP. You can process and analyze text, count the number of words in text, analyze its sentiment, or extract named entities. Oh, we can upload images? Wait, really? I don't think it can 
generate images, but you never know. No, they can't. It's more for data analysis. Stop generating. Let's see how I can upload an image in here. Oh, cool. You can actually see the requests and responses in JSON. That's pretty cool. I do not want to provide feedback. This is not as user friendly as I thought it would be. All right, calculate the volume of water that could fit into the Eiffel Tower. If Wolfram Alpha can't do that, I will be a bit disappointed and I'm 100% switching to Bard. All right, let's see. 1,083 feet tall and has a square base. Its shape is not simple geometric, like a cylinder or a cone, which makes calculating its volume a bit tricky. That it gives us some stuff about iron and the volume of water would be significantly less than a volume of a solid figure with the same dimension. It actually knows quite a bit. Oh, we can use the volume form for a cone. All right, that's nice. I like the font they're using for their formulas. It's quite nice. But it doesn't know the radius of the base of the Eiffel Tower. Come on, even I know that. This is slightly disappointing. Let's see what else you can do with, what plugin do we have? Let's start a new chat. Learn how to say anything in another language is speak your, your powered language tutor. Let's try speak. Oh, that is misleading. I thought we were gonna speak to it. It's like a translator. It's a little bit disappointing. Maybe, maybe I'm hard to impress, but I was a little bit more excited. How do I say pay me more in Guess Korean? It seems like a useful thing to know. I don't know. Using speak. What I like is that it seems to know which plugin to use for what. That's pretty clever. It's pretty basic, but at least it knows. Like you don't have to choose a plugin before you write a prompt. It knows which of the plugins to use. Oh wait, only one of them were enabled. But you get the point. I'm pretty sure it knows. In green, you can say pay me more as don jom Bell or some alternative ways. Wow, but I don't like how in the other options, it doesn't tell me how to pronounce it. Like I, I can't read Korean, obviously, but it's not very helpful. Oh, and it even gives us an example. Wow. All right, that's good enough for now. The speak seems different, but the marketing could have been better. I don't like that it's called speak because I thought it was going to be like Bard where I can speak directly to it, but no. Let's try trip.com, Expedia and Kaya. Oh, you can't enable Kayak while Expedia is enabled. I wonder why that is. That's some direct competition. Book me a round trip flight to LA from Zadar or split for May 18th to 22nd, max one layover. Let's see what it finds. It's probably not going to find as good of a flight as me. I'm not sure why it chose Expedia rather than trip com or trip plugin because it could have easily used the other one but all right let's see i found some flights for you please note that the flights have two stops there are options for one stop i was just looking at these flights horrible options extremely horrible the option i found was a thousand two hundred round trip from split to LA. Oh, there we go. Oh, it found one that's actually quite similar, except for the fact that it is 33 hours. And the first one is 40 hours and $2,000. Yeah, these flight options aren't great. I wonder how it chooses the most optimal one because it does not have a good algorithm for that. What do I rate this one? Five out of 10. We've tried Expedia. Let's try Open Table. Book me a table at a sushi restaurant in Zadar. Oh, wait, no, let's enable the ones. So let's say I want to take a trip. Ooh, and I have a research assistant. Yeah, let's enable these three and test them all out. Book me a car that I can rent in Split and then a table at a sushi restaurant for May 22nd. I'm a little bit underwhelmed to be honest, but it is a big step forward. I just think that Google Bard is going to do a much better job with these plugins. There's going to be a lot more and they're going to be way more powerful. I'm honestly a little underwhelmed with them, but it is still a really big breakthrough. This gives regular people the power to do very efficient tasks. Oh, you can click on the links to make a reservation. As for the car rental, I don't have the capability. Open table, I don't know. I'm not that impressed. Like this is pretty basic stuff you can do. What's great about this is you don't have to be a technical person. You don't have to know anything about how to even use chat GPT or use prompts that well because the plugins take care of a lot of that for you. This is going to make this technology a lot more useful 
and accessible to way more people. So that's exciting as, as soon as it does become available to the public for free, but I'm sure that'll happen soon. If you're new here, we talk about tech travel and a lot about AI. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're interested and turn on notifications so you won't miss AI discussions. And I would highly appreciate a like for the YouTube algorithm. Let me know what you thought down in the comments and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.